always, we have my trusty uh, jar of clear liquid that we all just assume is water. It's a little early, so hopefully it is. Um, and I'm just waiting here for a moment as I start to get all of this together, like usual. today? Well, I'm a big fan of blocks, so if you do not have blocks, don't worry. It's possible to do every routine I do without blocks. It just is a, a little harder for those of you who um, don't have a lot of experience in yoga. If you have a lot of experience in yoga, you probably don't need blocks. Um, I would suggest a pillow or a blanket just because I think we're going to do a pigeon today, and it's always nice to have a little bit of coughing for pigeon. And I will also bring attention to the fact that I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts today. I don't know if you can read it, but it says 50% Deepak and 50% Tupac. It is one of my favorite shirts. It is Friday, so it's a good day to wear your favorite shirt. All right, my loves. So we're gonna start exactly the same way as we always do, and that means on our bellies, laying upon our yoga mats. Placing one arm on top of the other, letting your forehead rest onto your arms, letting your legs rest onto the floor, because where else are they gonna go? And then from here, go ahead and just wiggle your hips a little bit from side to side. Just let them wobble to and fro, because you wanna wake up your lower back and get yourself ready for movement. And then from there, bring yourself into stability with the hips and the pelvis and untuck your toes. Let your body completely rest on the floor, head on the arms. So again, just so we're reminded, we start this class or every class really the same way on purpose. That way, if you're running a little late, you know exactly what's happened before you got here. Start to take some deep breaths in and out. Feel your belly expand. And then as you exhale, feel your belly relax. And there's my dog. Big deep breath in and big deep breath out. And give yourself just a couple moments to rest. Then when you're ready, keeping your legs nice and wide apart, bend your knees and start to windshield wiper your legs from side to side. Both legs go in one direction, then they go across to the other direction. Just letting those legs swing from side to side. I have a treat for those of you who look up at the uh, screen. One of my cats is in today. She's the wild one, so we'll find out what she does while she's one to video. One more time from side to side. And then come back into center. Extend your legs, press your hands into the floor, and let's come back into a child's pose. Letting your hips draw back and down. Letting your head rest on the floor or on a block. And taking one or two more deep breaths here. Then nice and slow, come forward into hands and knees. Your knees are gonna come under your hips, your hands are gonna come underneath your shoulders. And as you inhale, you're gonna let your belly draw down with the center of your chest up and the tailbone. And then as you exhale, you're gonna round your spine. Moving nice and slow here, inhaling, letting the front of the body extend. 
and exhaling, rounding your spine. And one more time, just like that. And we'll bring the spine to a neutral position. We're gonna go ahead and kick that right leg back, take the toes under, press through your right heel, center of the head comes forward. Then we're gonna lift this right leg up, find ourselves in this nice little balanced, precariously balanced position. And as we exhale, we're gonna bend that right knee and pull it in towards the head, maybe touching the forehead or the nose. And as you inhale, extending that right leg back. So the exhale draws you in, rounding, bringing yourself into a tight little ball, and then inhale comes back. And we'll do this two more times. Exhale, bring it in, tight, tight, tight. And then inhale, bring it back. And then last one, exhale, bring it in nice and tight. And then inhale, bring it back. Extend that right leg, keep it out. Turn the right toes away from you. Sweep that right leg out to the side so the sole of the foot comes to the floor next to your left knee. We're gonna walk our hands all the way over to the left. And then if you want to, and I really pr prefer having a block for this, place your left hand on the block next to your left knee with about torso of space apart. Then lift your right arm up, find a big stretch. We're going to bring this right arm down by our right hip with an exhale. And then you're going to inhale and roll this right arm up by your right ear. Hold here. Try not to drop into your left shoulder. Keep that right pinky toe on the floor. Find space in your hips. Move them forward just a bit. Beautiful. And then as you inhale, reach that right arm up to the sky and continue to inhale as you carry the body up as if somebody's pulling on your right hand. Draw that right hand down to the outside of the right leg. Inhale, lift that left arm up. And then exhale, reach that left arm by your left ear. It doesn't have to be magical here. It just has to be a stretch, right? Don't push your hips back as much as they might want to. Try to keep your hips forward and the left shoulder back. Inhale as you bring both arms up. Exhale as you carry both hands to the floor. And then activate the outer side of that right leg. As you inhale, lift it up, carry it back, toes point down. And then on this next inhalation, let that left arm come by your left ear. Exhale, pull that left knee and right, or left elbow and right knee together. Inhale, carry it forward. Exhale, pull it in, core is engaged. Inhale, reach forward. Two more. Exhale, pull it in, core is engaged. Inhale, reach forward. Last one. Exhale, tap, tap, tap. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, lower that right knee to the floor. Take a cat cow. Bring your spine to a neutral position again. Let's get off that left knee. So reach back through your left toes. Push the toes away from you. Big stretch through that left heel. Hands underneath the shoulders, unless that hurts your wrist, then you can place your hands slightly forward. Inhale, lift your left leg, pull your core in. Exhale, squeeze everything in. Inhale, carry everything back. Exhale, squeeze everything in. Inhale, carry everything back. Two more. Exhale, squeeze everything in. Inhale, carry everything back. One more. Exhale, squeeze everything in. Inhale, carry it all back. Beautiful. Turn your left toes out. Swing that left leg out to the side so it's in line with your right foot. Left foot's flat on the floor, pinky toe on the ground. Use a block if you want to. You're going to place it next to your right knee. Hands walk over. Right hand to the block, left arm to the sky. Exhale, lower your left hand by your left hip. Inhale, left arm comes up by the left ear. Big stretch, reach through your fingertips, move the hips forward. Let the right shoulder draw away from your ear a little bit here. Breathe deep here. Nice, slow, deep breaths in and out. Lengthening that left side of your body as best as you can. One more breath. Perfect. Reach that left arm up to the sky. Imagine somebody's pulling on your left hand to carry you up, okay? So inhale, lift up. Good. 
And then from here, exhale, left hand to your left thigh, right arm comes up, and we're just going to lean. Not push back, but lean. Core is engaged. Right arm's by your right ear, wherever it needs to be. We're just stretching out that right side of the body. One or two more breaths, okay? Inhale, both arms come up. Exhale, hands come back down to the mat. Inhale, carry that left leg back. And then exhale, or I'm sorry, inhale, right arm forward. And then exhale, right elbow to left knee. Inhale, carry it out. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, carry it out. Exhale, pull it in. Let's do one more. Inhale, carry it out. Exhale, pull it in. And then inhale, come back into hands and knees. Coming through cat cow. You have to come over here, bud. My dog wants to go out. One more time. And then bring your spine to a neutral position. Walk your hands forward from your shoulders. Tuck your toes under. Lift your knees off the ground. Lift your heels high. Shake out your head. Soften your neck and your jaw. Pull your lower belly in. Really reach those hips up. And then from here, nice and slow, walk your feet forward towards your hands. And just give me one second. Diesel, come. Can you get out that way? There you go. Woo -hoo, the joys of life. Okay, so that's what my house looks like all the time. Me letting my dog out and in. Arms come up, big stretch. Exhale, bring it all the way down. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway and hold. Beautiful, breathe here. Press the fingertips into the knees, or I apologize, into the shins. Bend your knees a little bit, roll your shoulders back. Top of the head comes forward. Hips over top of the ankles, just strong here for a moment. And then keep your spine long, keep your core engaged. Bend your knees just a little bit here, hands to the hip bones. And then carry those hips back as if you're going to sit into a chair. So oftentimes we think that this is a uh, chair pose because we look like a chair. We do not. But it is like we're sitting back into a chair. So you're trying to find the seat with your tailbone. And then bring those arms forward by your ears. Hold it here. Breathe deep though. Shift those knees back between behind your toes. Right? Core is engaged, but the ribs are in as well. Let's be here for three two, one, exhale, take those hands down to blocks or floor, and then inhale and lengthen the hips up, exhale, tighten up that forward fold a little bit, give yourself a nice long stretch in the forward fold, shake out your head, soften your neck and your jaw, let the top of the head come down towards the earth, think that's your goal, not bringing your forehead to your shins, And then pressing through your feet again. Inhale, push all the way back up. Find that nice big stretch. Come up slow from when, there's, when you're down for a while. And then exhale again, come right back down. Inhale, hands to shins, press a little bit. Just a little bit. Exhale, forward fold. Bend both your knees this time. Let your fingertips either come to the blocks or to the floor. And then stretch those arms forward by your ears. So you're a little bit deeper maybe in your chair. Pull your belly button to your spine. Think positive thoughts or any thoughts that are positive are good here. Let go of those negative, I don't want to be here thoughts. Last breath. Exhale, take it all the way back down. A little bit of heat this morning. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, press through your feet, rise all the way up. Right, so that chair goes as low as you feel comfortable going. Exhale. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, drop it back down. I promise this is our last one, maybe. Inhale, arms by your ears. Core is engaged. Find that seat behind you. One more breath. Exhale, take it all the way down, yikes. Inhale, press through those feet, come all the way up, big stretch to the sky. 
Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right leg comes back. Okay, lower that right knee straight down to the floor. Untuck your toes and find yourself into a low lunge. Walk your hands onto your left thigh. Let the hips come forward. And just see how that feels. How does that stretch the front of your right hip? How does it feel on the bottom of your left glute? Take one more breath here. And then exhale, place your hands back down to the blocks. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, push through your left foot and carry that right foot in. Inhale all the way up. Exhale all the way down. Inhale halfway up. Exhale all the way down. Inhale left leg back. Lower that knee to the floor. Find your hands on your thigh. Hold here. Breathe deep. Let there be knee over ankle action here. Let the hips draw forward. Nice slow deep breaths. Just getting used to that nice stretch in the lunge. Last one. Exhale, bring those hands back down. Inhale, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Exhale, press through your front foot, carry it forward. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, all the way down. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold. You don't have to use blocks, but you can. Inhale, right leg back. Exhale, left leg back. Continue to exhale as you lower your knees your chin and your chest. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right foot forward. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, all the way down. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, right leg back. Lower your knees, chin in your chest. <laughs> Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, all the way up. I know, that was a little fast. We'll slow it down just a bit so we can add to it. Exhale. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right leg back. Beautiful. Hold here. Nice deep breaths here. Just finding our little lunge, finding what we need. Good, good, good. Now you can drop that right knee if you'd like to. We can do the same thing we just did. Or you can keep that right knee lifted, pushing the heel back, keeping the back leg strong. Left knee over your ankle, hands to left thigh. Holding here, right hip forward. Lifting through that pelvic floor, if that's your uh, practice, right? Not gripping the floor with your toes on the front foot, but pushing back through that back leg. Holding here, we're almost out. Exhale, take the hands down. Inhale, step back into plank. Exhale, lower your knees, your chin and your chest. You can try the runga here if you want. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, down dog. Big stretch back first. Inhale, right foot forward. Get there whatever way you can. This is usually the hardest transition is trying to get your foot between your hands. So instead of stopping your foot here and trying to do this pose, instead, take the time to walk your foot forward. Really try to get that foot between your hands. Press back through your left heel. Find that strong balance between the two legs. Don't grip the floor with your right toes. Drop the knee if you need to, or hands come to the front thigh. Finding a way to squeeze towards center and pull up through that pelvic floor. For those of you who practice that, shoulder blades back and down. So you're engaging Mula Bandha. Push back through your heel. Stay breathing. Holding your breath just makes this dizzy. It doesn't make it easy. One more. Go ahead and lower those hands down. We're gonna step back again into plank. 
Find your plank. We're not doing a lot of vinyasas today, so we're just getting them out of the way early. So hold your plank for a moment. I know, you probably were already through it. Keep breathing. Push back through your heels. All right, so if you're lowering down knees, chin, chest, go ahead and do so. If not, shift forward, bend your elbows, untuck your toes or roll over your toes and lift your heart. Knees are off the ground, core is engaged. Exhale, tuck your toes, come back. Nice, slow, deep breaths here. Push those hips up and back, okay? Just keep breathing. It's important, just keep breathing. When you're ready, go ahead and step that left foot forward in between your hands. So remember, don't just stop halfway. Take a couple steps to get there if you need to. Push back through your right heel. Find a nice, strong lunge. Let the right hand stay right on the mat or on the block. And then nice and slow lift your left arm straight up to the sky, moving your left knee forward and pushing back through your right heel. This same pose can be modified with the knee down, right? We don't have to keep the knee up. Exhale as you lower that left hand down to the left block. And we're going to spin the right heel to the mat, so the right toes face forward. We're going to grab hold of the block behind our left ankle. Press down firmly into that block, place our right hand onto our right hip bone, and roll that hip back, and maybe bring that right arm to the sky. Left knee stays over the ankle, pushing through those right pinky toes, finding a big stretch here. You don't have to use a block, you might just come straight up to your extended side angle. Exhale, take the right hand down to your block that's low, lift the back heel, Lower that top block again. You can do this without. Inhale, step back with your left foot. Exhale, lower knees, chin, chest, or shift. Bend. Inhale and lift. Exhale, down dog. Stretch it back. All right, let's try that whole sequence on the other side. We have two sides, two sequences. Right leg comes up if you want, or just shift it forward, whatever way you want to get it there. Right knee over the ankle, push back through your left heel. Left hand stays on the floor or a low block. And then engaging as you lift, that right arm comes straight up to the sky. Shoulder blades draw back, left heel pushes back. Relax the toes of the right foot, okay? Hold here. Stay breathing, try not to lift your butt, Nicole. Here we go. All right, take it down. Right hand comes to a block beside your right ankle, or it doesn't, that doesn't have to be your gig. Spin the left heel to the floor. Right heel lines up with the left instep. Left hand comes to your left hip bone, and we're just gonna roll that hip back as we roll the shoulder back. Right knee stays bent, left arm comes up. Breathing here, if the knee wants to roll in, you're gonna roll it back towards the arm a little bit. For those of you without blocks, this is fine. Hold here, or you can place your hand on the floor. Don't let me stop your flow. Last two breaths. Last one. Exhale, rotate down, left hand to the block. Inhale as you lift your back heel, both blocks come down. Step back into your plank again. Hold your plank. Blocks or no blocks, hold your plank. Nice, slow, deep breaths, push through the heels, squeeze your inner thighs up to the back wall. So that means you're kind of rotating in a bit. Last two, last one. Shift, or knees, chin, chest, and lift. Take it back to down dog. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and move the blocks out of the way for a moment and reset our down dog without the help of our blocks. So for some of us, those blocks are really important, and if you need that, go ahead, but you can also try placing your hands on the floor, bending your knees, and getting a nice long spine. But if you really need those blocks to feel good on your wrist, keep those blocks. Push back and up with your tail. Take three, maybe four breaths. Let your chest just come forward through those arms. One more breath. Excellent, lift your heels. 
Start to walk your feet forward towards your hands. Come all the way to the front of the mat, wherever that is for you. And then from here, come all the way to standing. Excellent. Readjust your clothing because it's not a yoga video unless you see me adjust my clothes 70 to 80 times. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands together in front of your heart, finding that nice, Mountain pose with a little bit of prayer involved. See if the shoulders want to draw back. Find that alignment in the shoulders, ribs all the way down to the heels and ankles. Bend the knees a little bit so that you don't feel like you're just locking your knees back. Easy to see when someone's wearing shorts when they look like a newborn baby giraffe. You're trying to keep the knees slightly bent. Just enough to keep engagement in the thigh. All right. We're going to keep the hands together in front of our hearts and we're actually going to go into a balance and I know some of you hate this part so just bear with us. <laughs> Push your weight into the left foot, spread the toes, start to lift your right knee up so it comes about as high as your right hip. There are modifications for this. You can keep your toes on the floor and then when we come back into warrior three you can step back into warrior three. So I'll show it both ways. We're going this way. Okay, so we're just hinging like one of those um, you know, I'm going to make a reference that nobody understands, so I'm just going to let that go. So right toes to the floor would be the other option, and you can just step back, and you can take this variation. It's still working balance, right? All right, so pick the one you want, come back, find warrior three. So the hips are level, the hands are together in front of the chest, and you can lift your chest towards your thumb, your sternum towards your thumb. Your ribs are moving and your core is engaged. And then you're going to bend this left knee, the standing leg, and you're going to step back into a high lunge. So you might need to walk that foot back a little bit more. That's okay. The left knee is going to come over the ankle, and we're going to inhale and reach the arms up. Good. Try not to grip with your left toes. Let your left thigh be parallel with the floor as best as it can. Very nice. And this is your high lunge. We're just going to hold this. We're going to bring the arms down behind our back and interlace our fingers. Then we're going to move those arms away from us, lifting our chest but moving the ribs in. We're going to keep the arms interlaced as we lower our right heel to the floor and open up into a warrior two. Notice I'm adjusting my left footing because I want my left heel to line up with my right instep. My left knee's going to roll back and so is yours. If you want it to roll in, I'm going to want you to roll back. Left thighs are almost parallel with the floor, arms are still clasped. Then from here, we're going to lean to the left. I don't want you to try and take your left shoulder to your knee. Just lean so that the line from your right ankle to your right shoulder is long. Move the left hip back. Stay breathing. Hold on to it. One more breath like this. Inhale back to center. Straighten your left leg. Turn both feet to face forward. Exhale, forward fold, arms come overhead. Shift that weight towards the balls of your feet. Let the body really float forward. Bend both your knees. Bring it all the way up. I know we're still clasped. That seems crazy. Go ahead and turn your right foot out. Right heel lines up with the left instep. Bend your right knee. Bring the arms away from you for a moment. Take that right shoulder down towards that right knee. Move your left shoulder back. If you don't want to clasp, you don't have to clasp. You can just keep your hands on your hips. Right? There is a way to move through all of this. Beautiful. Come back through. This time we're going to come into a lunge. You're going to lift your back heel. Hold here. I know, that's crazy. Release your arms. Reach them up. They're going to feel tingly, maybe. Push back through your heel. One more breath. Beautiful. Go ahead and lower that left heel. Reach all the way up. Turn both feet to face forward and forward fold. Hands come down. Top of the head comes towards the earth. There's a lot of wide leg forward folds today. I've just been really into them lately. All right, here we go. We're going to work our way over to the left, but first we have to come up to standing. So bend your knees a little bit. Hands to your hips. Core's engaged. Good. Turn your left foot out. Come back into warrior two. 
Lift your back heel, lift your back heel and right arm to the sky. This is where things get a little wonky. You're gonna take your hands together in front of your heart. Bring your body forward. Yup, you know it's coming. We're going into warrior three. Lift, oh lift. And then carry that right foot down, come all the way up, big stretch. <sighs> Let the arms rest. Good job balancing, readjust your clothes. Oh, yoga clothes. All right, so we're gonna place the weight into the right foot. We're gonna come in through this exactly the same way, just a little different in the middle. So hands together in front of the heart. Chest is lifted. Core is engaged. Left knee lifts. Here we go. Modify this at your own speed. I'm gonna come back just a little bit because I don't know what I need the screen. Warrior three to start. Woo. All right, ready? Step back by bending your right knee. Take a high lunge, arms up. Yes. Find it here first. Right on. Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Pull gently to the right. Oh, the stretch. Push back through your left heel though, okay? Don't dig into the floor with your toes. Back into center. Grab your right wrist with your left hand. Oh, the stretch to the other side. Come back into center. We're going to spin that left heel to the floor, open up into a regular warrior two. Readjust the stance of your legs. This is important. Alignment is good. Right knee over your ankle, right thigh almost parallel with the floor. Strength here. Hold your strength here and here. Go ahead and start to straighten your right leg. Reach your left arm back. Stretch as far back as you can. Then go right back into warrior two. Three more times. Three, three more times. Inhale. Left hand down, right arm up. Exhale. Warrior two. Inhale. Left arm down, right arm up. Exhale. Warrior two. Last one. Inhale. Left arm down, right arm up. Exhale. Warrior two. Hold. Long hold. Just breathe. We got this. Knee over the ankle, okay? All right, let's straighten that right leg. Turn both feet to face forward. I very rarely like to bend forward with my butt facing you, but that's just how it turned out. So we're coming into a wide leg forward fold here. Big stretch. Sorry about that. A lot of butt there. So breathe here. <laughs> Last two. Last one. Press into the floor, bend your knees, hands to the hips, and lift. Take it to the left. Left foot turns out. Heel is in line with our right instep. Right back down into warrior two. Nice. Hold here. Tall in the spine, right? So we're lengthening both sides of our body. Both sides of our body are lifting up. All right, here it goes. Straighten that left leg, take that right arm back, big stretch. Exhale, take it back into warrior two. Inhale, right arm back, left arm up, and big stretch. Exhale. Last two, inhale, big stretch. Exhale. Last one, inhale, big stretch. Exhale, hold here, warrior two. Just breathe. Structure the body around what you need to do here. So structure around the breath. Feel the strength. Feel the skeletal system holding itself in place and the muscles supporting the skeletal system. There we go. We're going into a high lunge. So arms come up by the ears. Back heel lifts. High lunge. And then grab hold of your right wrist. Pull gently to the left. Big stretch. Push back through your right heel. Back through center, grab your left wrist, pull gently to the right. Inhale, back to center, high lunge. Lower the back heel, warrior two. Straighten the left leg, both feet face forward. Forward fold again. So here we go. 
back down into it. Back down into it. Maybe you're grabbing your ankles here. Maybe you're just walking your hands back towards your feet. Shake out your head, soften your neck and your jaw. Lift your tail. And then nice and slow, bend your knees, hands to your hips and lift. Turn your right foot out. Bring the arms by the ears. Push down through your right foot, hands come together in front of your chest. Lean forward, you know it, I know it, it's coming. Lift that back leg. Wobble your way up into warrior three. And then place that left foot on the floor and inhale, both arms up. Success. Exhale, forward fold. Breathe here, shake out your head, use your blocks, right? You can use them, they're good. One more breath. Perfect. Bring the hands together in front of your heart, bend your knees, and push yourself back up into standing. All right, so we're just going to transition back into that high lunge again, just for a moment. So you can come back whatever way you want. I really like doing it this way. So right foot comes back and step. We're going to lower the right heel, turn both feet to face forward. So once again, I'm going to tuck this shirt so I don't flash anyone. Our hands are going to, our hands are going to come onto our hip bones. We're going to have a little bend in the knees if we need to to come down. We're going to forward fold just like we did like a hundred times before. And then from here, we'll shift the weight a bit more towards the balls of the feet. And for those of you who really need the block here, and by really need, I mean just really want, that's fine too. You can place your hands on blocks. You pick, that's why they're there. That's why you bought them. So then from here, a little bend in the knees just so we can get the spine long. And then we're gonna keep the length in the spine but start to straighten the legs and shift the weight forward towards the balls of the feet. Not lifting the heels, keep your heels down. Right? Just activate your, your thighs. So pull the thigh muscle up and in. Lift the kneecap up and in. And a lot of times that makes no sense to most people. So if that's not working for you, just imagine um, somebody's coming up to you and squeezing your left thigh and you want them to feel the muscle. That makes sense to me. Anyway, so we're gonna walk to the right. So we call this in my class, uh, stalking like a puma. So I'm a child of the 90s and 80s and pumas were in style and I think this is what a puma stalks like. So you're dropping towards your right and then you're gonna walk across and drop towards your left, right? So we are Stalking like a puma. Right? This is not probably how a puma stalks, but I'm also not National Geographic. So keep going from side to side. Rock it out. Maybe one more. Let's take it through. And then this next time that you walk to the left, let's stay there. Well, it's my left, whoever your side is. Press that right pinky toe, find that big stretch on the outside of the right foot, push your hips back. And then let's take it all the way over to the right. Stretch those hips back. Shift your weight towards your heels. Excellent. You can take it deeper if you want to. It's up to you. You might be the type of person who likes to lift their toes off the ground and just kind of hang here. You might drop down onto your leg. That's fine too. Let's take it all the way over to the right. Try it again. I always have a little bit more flexibility for some reason on this side. And then take it back through. We're going to work our way all the way over to the left again. So then once you're coming to the left, you're going to spin that back heel, turn the left foot facing forward, and lower your right knee to the floor. Untuck your toes, and here we are in a low lunge. Right hip coming forward, arms come up. Just see how that, that feels. Remember at the beginning of class when we got into this pose and we had our hands on our thigh? See how it feels now. 
Maybe it feels a little better, maybe not. That's okay though. And then from here, we're going to place our hands onto blocks or the floor. Hamstring people, you're going to probably want blocks here. Then start to straighten your left leg, and you're going to lift your left toes off the mat. So the toes face up, and the left hip's going to draw back. Um, we're going to walk the blocks back just a smidge. Hands can rest on the block. And then instead of scooching over to the right, you're going to keep that right buttock moving back at the same speed as the left buttock. So we really want the hips to be level. I'm not sitting back on my heel because I want there to be a nice deep stretch in the back of my leg and I want to feel length in the front of my body. I want to feel like I can lift my chest forward and roll my shoulders back. So try not to rock to the right, try to keep level. Let's do one more breath here. Excellent. And then go ahead and bend your left knee. Come back into your lunge. And then place those hands down onto the floor, onto blocks, whatever way you want to. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. So I'm giving this as an option, but you do not have to do it. You can step your right foot forward and your left foot back. Some people like to do the little switch kickaroos. So switching and lengthening back. If you're like, no, I don't want to do a switch kick, then don't do a switch kick, okay? Just step the right foot forward. We're here waiting for you. And then lower your left knee down. And let's go explore that lunge on this side. Arms come up. Hips come down. How does that feel on this side? Does it feel the same? Does it feel different? Are you more balanced here? Are you less balanced here? Is this not your favorite pose? Do your knees hurt? Do your knees feel great? Exhale, place those hands right back down to the blocks. Hamstring people, I feel ya. Go ahead and use blocks. They help. Move those blocks back though, just a little bit so you're not rolling forward too much. Lift the toes off the ground. You might need to be higher on your blocks, right? Because we modify poses for our bodies, not for what we want. Moving that right hip back, <laughs> tailbone draws back, shoulders draw back, top of the head looks forward. What you guys don't probably hear right now is a cat yelling at me from outside. One more breath, maybe two. And then let's go ahead and carry it forward again. Find that lunge. Nice deep lunge. Tuck your back toes. Lift your back knee. Carry that right foot back. Find your plank. Lower both your knees to the mat. And roll back into child's pose. Breathe here. Very nice. Last breath. All right. Now from this position, we're actually going to move those blocks to the side. Come into hands and knees for a moment. And we're going to shift our left knee forward. So depending on your anatomy, Okay, some people feel really okay with their left knee being right behind their left wrist. Some people need their left knee to be inside of the hands. You pick the one that feels best for you on your knees. Tuck your back toes, walk your right leg back, and then start to move your left foot towards your right wrist. It doesn't have to be an amazing split, but it can if you want to. Shift your weight back and let the hips be even. For those of you who feel this in your left knee, you're gonna place a block or your pillow under your left buttock, or you're gonna lay down and do this in a completely different manner. I'm gonna show you real quick while you get into the pose. This is my left foot on my right thigh and I'm carrying it in. So this is the modification for people who can't put pressure on their knee. Okay, so finding the one that works, your body, your yoga practice, right? Lift the chest. Right hips coming towards the mat evenly with the left, don't lean. You know if I was with you, I would be the first person to say, stop leaning into your left buttock. 
hold here. You can keep your hands on the floor. Some of you are already on your belly. That's okay. You can lay down in this pose. I'm going to uh, enjoy the aspect of the back bend. So I really want to engage my core and lift the center of my chest. And let there be a little bit of a back bend here that I can explore. Because we've done a lot of forward folds. But if this is really uncomfortable for you, then just go ahead and lay down. You can try and see what happens if you don't use your hands. All right, so it'll be a little bit more trying for those of you on your back. So come off of your back, and then with everybody, we're gonna roll into our left buttock. So this is my left buttock that I'm laying on. I'm gonna pull my left heel towards my pelvis. I'm gonna roll my right leg out. So my right leg's going to stay up. My left heel's hanging in towards my pelvis. My right leg's out to the side. Right leg, left knee. So then from here, I'm gonna come into a forward fold first. You can put a blanket underneath of your buttocks if you want. So just coming into a forward fold. You can readjust. For me, I'm sticking to my mat, so I have to readjust a little bit. And then I'm gonna come out. I'm just gonna to start to turn my body to the right. And just give myself a little bend over the right leg. You might be flat over the shin, which is great. You might just be hanging out here with me. That's fine too. You might have blocks under your hands and are not even getting anywhere close. All of that's fine, okay? You might have something under your buttocks, especially if the left knee doesn't come down. All right. So then we have this left knee pointing towards the small side of our mat, right? So to come into this next pose, we're gonna to have to lift this right leg. You're gonna lift the right leg cross it over your left knee. You might need to scooch a bit. Scooch is like one of my favorite words. And you're crossing your right knee over your left. For those of you who can't um, stack the knees, then this is crisscross applesauce. Okay? And then we're just gonna forward fold. Yay for the forward fold. All right, now our right knee is primed to the front of the mat, so we can go ahead and switch into our pigeon on the other side. Where did my, oh, sorry. So, hands come to the floor, whatever way you're gonna get here is fine. The left leg comes back, readjust, and now we're pigeoning with the right knee forward. So as we all know, because I say it in every class and I say it in every video that I do a pigeon, I have um, a right knee issue. I don't know what it is. I think it's just something there to make me crazy. But I have a right knee issue, which means that it always hurts when I'm in pigeon. So I have to use something under my buttocks. And to, and to just put it out there, I've been doing yoga since I was 15. So if you are like, I'm not using props, I'll just live through the pain, don't be that way, right? There's nothing in this great big bad uh, practice of yoga that says that you have to injure yourself to reach enlightenment. That does not sound right. It doesn't sound fun. And just use your hands. Don't use your hands. Lay down on your belly. Don't lay down on your belly. Engage the core all the time. Lift your pelvic floor as much as you can. Left hips coming forward, really finding that engagement. Just hanging out though. Just hanging out. Last breath. All right, so we're gonna come out of this the same way. Now, because I'm gonna be facing the, same, the wrong direction, I'm gonna change around. But just so you can see it happen, you're going to drop your right buttock to the ground, move your right heel in towards your pelvis, let your left buttock come to the floor. I have that injury in my right knee. So, I'm gonna first take the blanket and place it underneath my glutes. My heel's gonna come closer towards my um, pelvis this way. I'm gonna try to make it look like I'm not doing yoga in my underwear for a moment. And now my knee can rest uh, comfortably on the floor. So from here, lean forward. Just kinda hang out. 
Lengthen the top of the head away from your tailbone. Let your buttocks stay down onto the mat. Wool on the blanket. Just kind of be happy here. We're getting to the end. No more balances, no more chairs, nothing crazy. You know what's coming. All right, so we're making our way towards this leg, whatever the long leg is, I believe it's the left. So coming up, turning the hands, bringing the body down. And just finding it wherever we are. Again, injuries might keep you from being as low on this side, or injuries might make it easier. This might be your great side. Awesome. Let's come all the way up. So this is that stacking of the knees. We'll bring that left leg forward, stack the knees on top of each other. I'm just facing you because of where I happen to be. You could be facing the small side of your mat. And we're gonna forward fold. Or we're crisscross applesauce. And we can still forward fold. Crisscross applesauce. It's just a funny way of saying that. It's also, I think it's considered Sukhasana, it's easy pose. All right, come all the way up. We're gonna come out of this posture and we're going to lay down onto our backs. So we are getting to that time. Once you're on your back, pull your knees towards your chest. So we're just right back into another variation of the forward fold. This is Apanasana, our wind relieving pose. Great for digestion. All right, and then from here, we're going to extend both of our legs up to the sky, and that's just to give a nice big deep stretch. Press through your heels, really open up the back of the legs, and then point your toes, and then wiggle your toes, and then we'll bend the knees, and we'll lower the heels and feet to the floor. So our core stays engaged here, just so that we can keep practice on um, not just letting everything go as soon as we lay down. That comes at the end, but not at this point. We're keeping a slight engagement in our core. And then we're gonna walk our feet so that they're about mat distance apart. For those of you who have a tendency to do this with your head and your throat gets really open here, go ahead and place a pillow or a blanket underneath of your head because we're not going to be coming up right, so you'll be fine. We're gonna draw both knees to the left. To the left. And then we're going to come across center and draw both knees to the right. And then we're going to come across center and draw both knees to the left again. And you're going to hold here, see how that feels, see where you're at. Maybe your knee drops to the floor, maybe it doesn't. And then we're going to see if we can do this comfortably. If not, then we're not going to do it. The left ankle is going to come to the outside of the right thigh, not knee, but right thigh. And it's just going to almost uh, create its own little bind. If this feels uncomfortable on your knees or your hips, then please don't do it. Take the left foot off. Come cross center. Drop back over to the right. And do the same thing. Hold it here. See where your legs go. And then lift that right foot. Place it on top of the left thigh. For a moment, stretch out for a moment, lengthen out for a moment. And then release again, come back through center. The legs are going to stay wide, we're just going to pull both knees into the chest and we're going to rock from side to side, keeping the knees wide. Then take the soles of the feet together, lower the pinky toe down to the floor, open up your knees out to the side. Maybe you're placing blocks underneath your legs here because they don't touch the floor and it hurts your knees or your hips don't like it. And then let your hands rest onto your belly. 
can just take a couple deep breaths here, and this is when we're going to soften the abdomen so that we can actually feel the breath going into the belly. So we can let the softness of the belly accept a rhythm of breath, a rhythm of movement. I know for a lot of us, we don't really like to lay still very long, but think of it this way. As you're laying here with your knees opened out to the side, your hips are actually getting a little bit more space. You're stretching out a little bit into the groin, into the inner thighs. You're relaxing and hopefully not causing any pain in your lower back. So you actually are doing something here just because you're still. You're letting gravity do the work in this pose. You don't have to push. And then we're just going to place the hands to the outside of the thighs. I think it's really important here to help your body back to center. And then from here, we're going to extend the legs. So reaching the arms overhead and stretching the legs onto the floor. Walk both of your feet about a foot to the left and grab your right wrist. Pull gently, oops, pull gently to the left with your left hand and you're creating a kind of a C curve on your side body. You can stay here or you can um, hook your right ankle over your left or hook your left ankle over your right or just keep your legs as they are. You wanna do the one that feels comfortable. And we're gonna come back into center and we're gonna do the same thing. So center the legs, center the arms, walk your feet a foot to the right, grab your left wrist, pull gently to the right, find that C curve, you can stack the ankles if you want in any direction or just kind of hang out. Get that nice stretch on the side body, okay? So you're looking for an opening all the way through. And then nice and slow, come back to center. Stretch through your fingertips. Reach through your toes. And then let your arms come down by your sides, not that they're touching your body, and let your legs come a little wider apart. So this is Javasana, so just laying down, relaxing your body onto the floor, softening your eyes, closing your eyes. You stay there if you're looking up. I'm just resetting so I don't fall asleep. So while you're laying onto the ground, go ahead and keeping your eyes closed, start to deepen your breath. Again, soften the belly. Feel the rise and fall. See if you can feel the rhythm of your breath slowing down. For those of you who have a hard time focusing on just feeling the breath move, go ahead and start saying to yourself, inhaling, exhaling. Not out loud, but just in your mind. Notifying yourself of the inhalation, and the exhalation. Letting the word take up the space of the breath. And then start to soften your toes, the tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet, Soften your ankles, your shins. Just 
soften the calves, feel them heavy against the floor. Soften your knees. Relax under the knees. Soften your thighs, tops, bottoms, inner, outer thighs. Feel how heavy the legs are on the floor. Soften your hips. Relax your pelvis. Soften the lower abdomen, the lower back. Soften your torso, your navel center, the left and the right side of your spine. ribs and your chest, your shoulders, your collarbone, feel the heaviness of your torso. Feel the connected piece of your buttocks to your thighs and your lower back. And then start to soften and heavy the weight of your buttocks to the floor. Feeling the buttocks anchoring down the legs and the torso. Soften your fingertips, your fingers, tops and bottoms, palms of your hands. Soften your wrist, your forearm, your elbow and your upper arms. Feel how heavy the arms can be against the floor. Soften the shoulders. Soften the muscles around the shoulder blades, feeling them getting heavier towards the floor. And as they get heavier and relax, the arms and torso get anchored deeper into the ground as well. Soften your throat and your neck. jaw and your tongue. Soften your cheeks, the bridge of your nose, the eyes and the eyelids. Soften through your forehead, your temples and the top of your head, even into the back of your head. Feel the weight of your head drawing down anchoring the rest of the body towards the floor. And take one or two deep, full breaths here, feeling heavy towards the ground. slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Go ahead and carry your knees in towards your chest and rock over to your right side staying in the fetal position for just a moment. And then pressing your left hand into the floor all the way up into seated, whatever that looks like for you. Thank you so much for sharing your Friday morning with me. Let's bring our hands together in front of the heart if it is in your practice. Namaste. If not, that just means that the light within me honors the light within you. And if that's still something that you're not down with, I'm okay with that too. Just happy Friday, y'all. Take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. I know the weekend usually means we go out and do stuff, but unfortunately, it still means more of the same. But for those of you who are still working, enjoy your weekend. And for the rest of us, enjoy your weekend. Namaste.